10 Embarrassing Bad Habits Meghan Markle Keeps Secret. Part two, spending habits. Yes, Meghan Markle came into her relationship with Prince Harry with her own money, her own fame, and her own success, and we have to give her credit where credit's due. But at the same time, a lot of people can't help but notice that Meghan sure loves to spend her money. And now that she's a member of the British monarchy, she'll have access to a little bit more. Meghan loves having Princess Diana's diamonds in her engagement ring. She said everything about Harry's thoughtfulness and the inclusion of that and obviously not being able to meet his mom. It's so important to me to know that she's a part of this with us. Breaking protocol. Over the years of Meghan's inclusion into the monarchy, she has broke protocol on multiple occasions, starting with when they announced their engagement. They stepped out for a photo call in Kensington Palace. For the massive occasion, she wore a white coat and green dress, but she left out an item. Royal expert Victoria Arbiter explained the issue to Insider. You never see a royal without their nude stockings. Meghan, from what I can see from the engagement photos, doesn't look like she was wearing tights or stockings. Arriving at another event in a horse-drawn carriage with her husband, Prince Harry, Meghan looked every inch the modern-day princess in the bespoke creation by Venezuela designer Carolina Herrera. The suit star overlooked another fashion rule, exposing her shoulders. Fashion tradition usually dictates that royal women do not wear off shoulders or other more revealing styles. Marco wore a gorgeous Dior dress for baby Archie's christening, but again, another taboo because usually royals use British designers like Kate Middleton has done in the past. Big part of Meghan Markle's wardrobe strategy is to campaign female designers. And ever since Maria Grazzi was appointed Dior's creative director, Markle's been a fan. And then her nails. Normally royals use pink or neutrals on their nails. Not for Megan. She broke this pres she broke this president by wearing brodeur on her nails at the Royal Albert Hall. And then another incident where she exposed her legs, which is a big no-no amongst royals. Protocol dictates that anytime you wear a skirt or a dress, stockings are a must. But in the thick of August heat, Meghan ditched the pantyhose and went bare leg in a black Judith Charles tuxedo dress. Although this isn't the first time Meghan broke the rule, it is the first time she violated it after becoming a royal. And finally, during the Wimbledon Women's Finals, Meghan Markle donned a pair of white pants and a striped shirt from Ralph Lauren. It's been reported that the late queen prefers the woman in the family to wear dresses and skirts for official appearances, which is what Kate Middleton opted to wear while attending the event alongside Meghan. Meghan also wore a hat, which isn't necessarily a no-no in the royal protocol, but Wimbledon's official website asks that ladies not wear hats as they tend to obscure the vision of those seated behind them. Royal women typically wear skirts and dresses to formal events, but Meghan Markle was a rule breaker. Royal traditions. Among the many scenes sparking heated debate in the docuseries, one moment stood out in particular, and I think you know where I'm going with this. When Meghan Markle demonstrated how she curtsied when she first met the Queen. In the clip, the Duchess of Sussex recalls preparing to meet the late Queen for the first time. I didn't know I was going to meet her until moments before, Meghan said in a joint interview with Prince Harry. In the second episode of their six-part docuseries, we were in a car we were going to the Royal Lodge for lunch and Harry was like, oh, my grandmother is there. She's gonna be there after church. She continued, I remember we were in the car driving and he's like, you know how to curtsy, right? I just thought it was a joke. It was not a joke. However, the Duchess recalled quickly learning how to curtsy before meeting the monarch for the first time. Now I'm starting to realize that it is a big deal, the Duchess said. I mean, Americans would understand this. She also compared the experience to medieval times dinner and tournament, an American dinner theater production with medieval inspired events like jousting and sword fighting. Then in a moment that has been dividing viewers, the Duchess gave a deep exaggerated bow as if to demonstrate how she curtsied before Queen Elizabeth, before rising and saying with a wide smile, pleasure to meet you, your majesty. Prince Harry, whilst preparing his memoir with stories being completely different from the ones being released as part of the docuseries as they work on making amends. They've apparently changed their mind about airing the family's dirty laundry, but that's not all. They've also knowingly or unknowingly mixed up some of their story details. The insider claimed a lot in the show contradicts what Harry has been writing. So that was a major issue. 
Harry and Meghan are having second thoughts on their own story on their own project, a Netflix source said. Sources say that Harry and Meghan had made significant requests about toning down the content they had initially provided, but were denied because of how late in the process they had done it. Go with your gut and release it, which obviously they did. Stealing Spotlight. The queen, the late queen's health was raised as a concern by Jeremy Kyle while he slammed Meghan Markle for timing her announcements to be as embarrassing as possible for the royal family. A direct quote from Jeremy Kyle on Piers Morgan's talk TV show and let me know your thoughts on this accusation. He said, I'll say it again. If you don't want to be in the royal family because you don't like the press and exposure and you don't like every facet of your life being interrogated, I get that. You go to California with the love of your life and you have two children. You don't land and sign a deal with Spotify. And this is the bit that really gets in my bits if I'm being completely honest. Every single time there's something that matters to the royal family, like this referring to the passing of Prince Philip and referring to the fact that it was Princess Diana's 25th anniversary, what does Meghan Markle do? Drop her latest truth bomb. His words are an effort to point out a trend he sees of Meghan Markle still in the spotlight. I won't say my opinion, but instead ask for yours. So let me know in the comments what you think about that. She apparently believes she's better than her family, which I would say is a bad habit. Not all members of the Meghan Markle family are willing to go on record with their names when they decide to share potential damaging secrets about the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. Meghan and Prince Harry live closer to Meghan's family now that they've decided to live a more private life in the US. But an anonymous family member shared with Fox News that their move does not mean that Meghan will be contacting relatives to have play dates with their kids anytime soon. Yeah, right, after I set up a play date with Oprah Winfrey's family too, the source responded to the idea sarcastically. We are clearly in different social classes and we don't ever talk again. The insider also insinuated that Meghan now believes she's better than her family and that they are not interested in having a relationship with her if she's gonna be fake. You shouldn't have to be someone you're not or a certain class to be accepted and loved, the source said. I'm not chasing after someone that doesn't wanna to talk to me. I have my own family and we couldn't be happier sharing that love that we have. Megan's lack of contact with her family is allegedly her choice. And also hiding her family. Thomas Markle Jr. had an oldest son, Thomas Dooley, who hasn't really been in the spotlight for, I guess, good reasons. Thomas Dooley followed in his father's footsteps in more recent years and gotten into a bit of trouble with the law. In September 2019, he was arrested in Hollywood for unruly behavior in public. Dooley, who was allegedly under the influence, was spotted walking down a street shouting gibberish while donning only a towel, TMZ reported. The tabloid later obtained video of Dooley being apprehended by authorities while completely naked, he was charged with a felony for resisting arrest because a police officer injured his knee while trying to detain him. A witness told TMZ that Dooley was strapped to a gurney and a paramedic treated him on scene. Reportedly, on a court appearance he made after the incident, Dooley and his lawyer requested that he be allowed to enter a mental health program rather than having to go through trial with his felony charge. If convicted of that charge, he could potentially face up to three years behind bars. A former fling of Dooley told the Daily Mail that Meghan Markle's nephew developed an addiction to substance after divorcing his husband of 10 years, Ronnie Tanner, in 2019. Zepeda and Dooley had a 48-hour affair during which Dooley would allegedly frequently take hits of a substance. Eventually, I think it could end up taking his life, said Zepta. Informality. The words of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle seemed to be informal to many people when they wished George a happy birthday. They didn't just leave a comment under George's photo that was published on an official Instagram page of Kensington Palace, but they also forgot to mention the full title of the future king. Even in this informal congratulations message, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle were supposed to call him his royal highness. Relax media and royal experts, I'm sure they FaceTimed him, got him a gift and the whole shebang. I personally don't care for the royal protocols. I think they're stupid. I think they're people and let them be people. Potentially lying, Meghan Markle teared up over how hard she worked to fit in before stepping back from her royal duties in January 2020, I tried so hard, the Suits alum says, in the second half of her docu-series. That's the piece that's so triggering, she continued, because it still wasn't good enough and you still don't fit in. 
Megan described leaving England, saying in the docuseries that a man overseeing the plane's crew took his hat off and shared his appreciation for everything she did for the country. Megan remembers it was the first time that she felt someone saw the sacrifice, not for her own country, but for this country. It's not mine. When the couple landed in Canada, Markle says she collapsed in the arms of one of Prince Harry's longtime security guards. The Deal or No Deal alum, yeah, we had to throw that in there real quick, said she told her husband's employee that she tried so hard, to which he replied, I know you did, I know you did, ma'am, I know you did. People believe all this is false and lies and made up and boosted stories. What do you think? Habit of Prince Harry's and Meghan's, hypocrisy. Obviously, we know senior royals are not making public reactions to the series or the memoir and are continuing on with their duties. But Harry has faced claims of hypocrisy after he used the show to slam Meghan Markle's dad for doing deals with photographers. The shameless prince told Netflix, it's amazing what people do when offered a huge amount of money. But the hypocrisy in this is him and Meghan are said to have been paid 80 million euros to spill their guts on the show. The couple also have previous forms of struggling to tell the whole truth after at least 17 mistakes in their Oprah Winfrey interview last year. Megan even had to apologize to high court after forgetting she had briefed the authors of Finding Freedom despite denying claims for years. Her spokeswoman raised eyebrows by claiming Megxit was never about privacy. Ashley Hansen told the New York Times their statement announced their decision to step back, mentions nothing of privacy, and reiterates their desire to continue their roles in public duties. Any other suggestions speak to a key point of the series. They're choosing to share their story on their terms, and yet the tabloid media has created an entirely untrue narrative that permits press coverage and public opinion. The facts are right in front of them. Thanks for watching. That was part two of 10 bad habits Meghan Markle tries to keep secret, but I found them. And now you know, so now it's not a secret.